Well, OPEC Plus's crucial meeting came amid various reports the Biden administration had been desperately trying to dissuade its allies in the Middle East from enacting these cuts. It comes amid concerns over an impact to domestic gas prices. Certainly something that's top of mind with the midterms just around the corner. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman. Uh, Rick, a lot to parse through, especially given the EU headlines that came out, too. That's obviously been negotiated in conjunction with the U.S. to try and place this um, uh, price cap on Russian oil. What's the next move for the White House? <laughs> uh, well, they monitor gasoline prices every minute of every day. <laughs> so I think what they're watching is, I think they really want to know, are gas prices, average prices in the U.S. going to get above $4? That, that seems to be the pivot point. Uh, they seem to be about as content as they can be as long as there's a three handle. And most people see gas prices to start with a three. Um, they don't want to see gas prices to start with a four. If they creep up there and they're getting close again, gas prices are going back up around 384 um, what else can they do? The, uh, the administration has already, without really publicizing it, they have already extended uh, the release of oil from the Strategic Reserve into November. It was supposed to end at the end of October. That now goes into November. Uh, they're releasing less in November than they did in prior months. But still, they're trying to do that's obviously an effort to try to get, um, to, you know, just put a little extra supply out there and say a bit of a backstop on prices. Um, I'm not sure there's much else they can do because they've tried uh, jawboning the Saudis. They've tried jawboning U.S. producers. Uh, they do have one thing going for them, which is U.S. production actually is going up as the Biden administration wants it to. It's going up slowly, but it is helping. Um, so I think they're just going to be holding their breath until November 8th. Yeah, the production is certainly key when you consider how depleted SPR already right. is. Uh, you know, there's the political backdrop to all this, which is, of course, that trip the president made to Saudi Arabia over the summer. You know, we saw in the aftermath of that OPEC plus just uh, increasing production just slightly. But now you've got this what is considered, you know, more than expected, two million barrels a day production cut. What does that mean in terms of the U.S. relationship with the Saudis? Well, it's obviously uh, icier than it used to be. And let's let's not forget that this goes back to the murder of the journalist Kamal Khashoggi, Jamal Khashoggi uh, a few years ago in Turkey, uh, perpetrated by the Saudi regime. Um, so Biden described the Saudi government and their leader, Mohammed bin Salman, as a pariah state in, uh, when he was running for president. Uh, that obviously reflected uh, deteriorating relations. And uh, then he had to go over there kind of, kind of uh, taking it back and saying, could you please release a little more oil? They basically said no. Um, so. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot. Th this market is huge and very dynamic. And uh, you know, one of the things that has gotten the Saudis' attention is increased production in the United States. The United States is still the world's largest producer of oil. Uh, it became the first largest producer a couple of years ago, and it still is. Um, but the government here doesn't control the oil sector. That's the big difference. So the government here can't say pump more, pump less. Um, that's up to the private sector and all the incentives there. So very dynamic market. Whatever OPEC says it's going to do is not necessarily the way it's going to play out for the next year or year and a half. Uh, and I was encouraged to hear uh, Bob, the oil analyst, saying he thinks it's more likely oil prices are going to go lower rather than higher. But um, the Saudis are still there trying to keep a floor on oil. Yeah, it's sort of that a lot of tension in this market. Yeah, it's sort of that constant between trying to figure out what that global demand looks like. Obviously, what's happening in China playing into that as well. Yeah, and then there's the true. political side of things with Russia, Ukraine uh, war continuing. Uh, Rick, as always, thanks so much Thank for you. that.